Hi, it's Nisha Nicholas. I'm going to talk to you today about the pathway of blood flow through the human heart. So I want to start you out with just a reminder of the reason why blood is flowing through the heart and just some basic information that hopefully you know already. So this should be just a review for you. So when you begin looking at this first image, you see that you have the heart, okay? And remember, the heart is a two-sided pump. One side of the heart is responsible for taking blood out to the lungs, and the other side of the heart is responsible for taking blood out to the rest of the body. So let's look briefly at that particular part of the pathway of blood flow, and then we'll get into a little bit more detail. All right, so here we have the right side of the heart, Okay, so I've just outlined it in green. On this particular image, it's blue. And it's blue because it is filled with deoxygenated blood. Now, why do we know that the blood is deoxygenated? Well, of course, the color is going to be an indication. But the main reason that we know that is because the blood has just returned from the body, from the areas above the heart and the areas below the heart. And the reason that blood is deoxygenated is because, remember back to the purpose of this heart pumping, we're taking oxygenated blood out to the body. Now, I want you to think for a moment, why are we taking that oxygenated blood out to the body cells? You should know this and you should know it from your 201 studies. Hopefully you do remember that we take blood out to body cells to carry nourishment we take blood out to body cells carrying hormones and other things in the blood. One of the main things that we're uh, going to talk about here, though, is taking that blood out for the purpose of dropping off oxygen. Okay? So we take blood out to the body. We drop off oxygen so that the body cells can make ATP. Remember, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is the fuel that our body cells use for metabolic purposes. So we take that oxygen out to body cells attached to erythrocytes, attached to the hemoglobin portion of those erythrocytes, and we drop that oxygen off so the mitochondria in those cells can make ATP in sufficient amounts to fuel those metabolic processes. Now, if we take that blood out and we drop off oxygen, we've got to get that blood back to the heart. And the way that we bring it back is deoxygenated blood which gives a blue appearance to the blood. So when you see a blue vessel or a blue chamber in a heart, it typically indicates that it is carrying deoxygenated blood. But now that deoxygenated blood is also carrying CO2. Remember CO2, carbon dioxide, is a waste product that's created as we make ATP. So we've got to get rid of that waste product and we carry it dissolved in the blood in the form of carbonic acid. All right, so we're bringing that deoxygenated blood back. So here we have areas below the body. Here we have areas above the body. So this network of blood vessels here represents the lower body capillaries. This network of blood vessels up here indicates the upper body capillaries. So we've dropped off that oxygen. We've got to bring it back, bring that deoxygenated blood back up through the inferior vena cava. And I'm going to abbreviate here. The inferior vena cava and dump it into the right atrium. We're also going to be bringing that deoxygenated blood back from areas above the heart through the superior vena cava. And once again, dumping that deoxygenated blood right back into that right atrium. All right, from the right atrium, it's going to go into the right ventricle and then be pumped out through these vessels. Do you know what those vessels are called? Well, let's back up and go through this again. So deoxygenated blood comes into the right atrium. Okay, from the right atrium, it's going to go through a valve called the tricuspid valve. That tricuspid valve allows blood to flow into the right ventricle, then when the ventricle fills, it contracts and pushes blood through another valve. Let's change colors here. We'll go with red. Through this valve, which is the pulmonary valve, and that blood goes out through the pulmonary trunk. Actually, I think I want to go with blue here because we're talking deoxygenated blood. Okay? So we'll go through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary trunk. 
that splits into the left and right pulmonary arteries. Now, how do you know those are arteries? All right, so we've got the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery. How do you know they're arteries? Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Okay, so here you've got the pulmonary trunk splitting into the left and right pulmonary arteries. Those pulmonary arteries are going out to, pulmonary tells you, lungs. So when the pulmonary arteries carry that deoxygenated blood out to the lungs, then that CO2 is dropped off and oxygen is picked up. Remember, that can only happen in the lungs. So both on the left side and on the right side, we're dropping off CO2, picking up O2. Now that blood has become oxygenated, so let's change the color of our pen to red. And we're going to return that oxygenated blood back from both lungs through the left pulmonary vein and the right pulmonary vein. Now, you know those are veins. Why? Veins bring blood back in. So V-E-I-N brings blood back in. A-R-T-E-R-Y, A for away. Okay, so arteries take blood away from the heart. Veins bring it back in. So now we've got that oxygenated blood coming back through our left and right pulmonary veins into this upper chamber on the left side of the heart. Now the left side of the heart is going to be responsible for taking blood out to the body because it's full of that oxygen now. All of that oxygen is bound to those hemoglobin molecules so we can take that oxygenated blood out. So the oxygenated blood fills the right atrium. The right atrium then fills and this particular valve, let's go with a different color here for this valve. Okay, so we've got a valve there, a valve there, a valve there, and a valve up in here we'll talk about. All right, so this valve then pushes open because that right atrium has filled with blood. This valve is your bicuspid valve. You may also hear it referred to as the mitral valve. The blood flows into the left ventricle. The left ventricle fills and pushes open the aortic valve and then blood rushes out into the aorta. Now the aorta is the main artery to take blood away from the body, or I'm sorry, away from the heart and out to the body. So part of that blood is going to go above the heart to the areas, the arms and the head, the shoulders. Part of that blood will go down through the descending aorta to the areas below the heart. Now what happens when we get out there? Just the opposite of what happened here in the lungs. Now remember, we've got oxygenated blood going out to these two areas. So we're going to drop oxygen and pick up CO2. Drop oxygen, pick up CO2. All right, now once we do that, what happens? We've got that deoxygenated blood so we start this whole pathway over. That deoxygenated blood then returns back to the right atrium. All right, so far so good, huh? All right, let's take a little bit closer look at the structures of the heart now. Whoop, back up, there we go. Okay, so here you see a heart image similar to the heart models that you're going to see in a lab. I'm gonna change pen colors again and go back to the green just to uh, make it stand out a little more. So here, you've got your superior vena cava, your inferior vena cava. That deoxygenated blood is coming back from above the heart and below the heart, and both of these are emptying into the right atrium. Now, that right atrium is going to fill, and I know I'm reviewing this. I'm going back over what I just told you, but this is important, so I want to make sure that you get all the different looks at it that you can. All right, so as this chamber fills with that deoxygenated blood. It's going to push on this valve. Do you remember the name of the valve? Tricuspid. Okay, so your tricuspid valve is going to push open, allow that deoxygenated blood to fill 
your right ventricle. When this right ventricle fills, it's going to push against this valve, which is your pulmonary valve. Remember what pulmonary refers to? Of course you do. It refers to the lungs. So your pulmonary valve is going to open. That deoxygenated blood fills the pulmonary trunk into the left and right pulmonary arteries and out to the lungs. Okay? Now what's going to happen when we get out to the lungs? Remembering we're carrying deoxygenated blood, so we go out to the lungs. We drop off CO2, pick up O2. Now that blood is oxygenated again. It's going to be returning from the lungs through your left and right pulmonary veins. Oxygenated blood then empties, you've got two more holes over here, empties into the left atrium. And that left atrium fills, it pushes against this valve, which is your bicuspid valve. Your bicuspid valve then opens, and allows the left ventricle to fill. Once that left ventricle fills, it pushes against this valve, which is your aortic valve. the aortic valve, the opening to the aorta, and the aorta fills with oxygenated blood. Now, if that blood is going above the heart, it's going to take one of these three branches, which you'll learn in lab. If it's going below the heart, it's going to continue down this, behind the heart, down to here, and out to the body. So this is your descending aorta down here. So far, so good? All right, let's look just a little bit more at a couple of other things I want to point out to you. Here you have some images of the valves, so I want to talk to you just a bit about these valves. This particular valve here and this valve here. Now here you have your atria. Your atria are your receiving chambers. Down here you have your ventricles. Okay, so these two valves that are between the atria and the ventricles are your atrioventricular valves. Atrioventricular valves between the atria and the ventricles, okay? So here you have, uh, according to this diagram, we're looking at the one on the left side. So this is going to be your bicuspid valve. All right, so remember that oxygenated blood now is coming in from the lungs and filling this chamber, okay, filling this atrium. As this atrium is filling, so is this one, okay? So you've got the same thing happening on both sides of the heart. Even though we talk about the blood comes into the right side and goes out to the lungs and then comes back into the left side and goes out to the body. This is happening simultaneously. Both atria are filling. Both ventricles are filling. They fill and eject simultaneously. The atria do, then the ventricles do. So as your atria, your left atrium and your right atrium are filling, those valves are going to open because the pressure in that chamber has increased, okay? And it's pushing against that valve. It pushes downward and allows the blood to flow down into the ventricles. So now these ventricles are filling. And if you look on this particular image over here, you'll notice a couple of structures that you're also going to see in lab. Let's go with a different color here. How about the black? Okay, so these string-like structures are the chordae tendineae. Okay, and they're attached to finger-like projections of muscles. Now, those play a very important role in preventing backflow. Now, remember, when blood flows through the heart, I'm going to erase this now because I want to be able to point something out. Let's just focus here on these structures, all right? So your chordae tendineae and your palpillary muscles. Now, here are your palpillary muscles. There are your chordae tendineae, palpillary muscle with the chordae tendineae. All right, the job of these is to prevent backflow through those atrioventricular valves. When those ventricles fill, the pressure inside the ventricles is going to increase. 
When that pressure increases enough, the ventricles are filled, and you'll hear about the cardiac conduction system depolarizing cells. When all of that happens, then those ventricles are going to contract. And when they contract, they're pushing upward. Now think about this. They're pushing upward. We want that blood to flow out the aortic valve and go out to the body. We want it to flow out the pulmonary valve and go out to the lungs. We don't want it going back up into the atria. So that when the ventricles contract, they're made of muscle. These are also muscle, palpillary muscle. Your palpillary muscles contract when the ventricles contract. As they do so, they pull on those chordae tendony and those atrioventricular valves snap closed. So blood can't go back up into the atria because you don't want it going there. You want it going out to the lungs and going out to the body. All right, so now on this last slide, I put the same diagram up that we had on the first one. So I want you to take some time now and see if you can label these structures. And as you do so, think about whether or not they're carrying oxygenated blood or deoxygenated blood and why. So one more quick review, just doing the heart mostly. We bring deoxygenated blood back into the right atrium, through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Out the right ventricle through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary trunk that splits into the right and left pulmonary arteries, taking blood out to the, I'm sorry, out to the lungs. Okay, then that blood comes back through your pulmonary veins. Oxygenated blood back into the left atrium through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. The left ventricle fills, pushes blood out the aortic valve into the aorta and then out either to the areas above the heart or the areas below the heart where we drop off oxygen, pick up CO2, come back to the right side through the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava. All right, so I want you to practice on that. Practice that pathway of blood flow through the heart. Then when you and your instructor are working in lab and you're talking about tracing a drop of blood, all you've got to learn are those peripheral blood vessels and where you're headed. So really work on this, tracing the pathway of blood through the heart. Hope this has been helpful. Talk to you soon.